I have been wondering about something because um, I don't know how a lot of things work. Uh, as we mm. just established with trombones, I Welcome don't know how trombones club. work, but I've learned that. <laughs> you do now. <laughs> I, I don't know how chocolate is produced. Oh. And I've heard that you might know a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Do you Good. think you'd be willing to, would you prefer to sit or stand and tell us a little bit about how chocolate's produced? I would definitely prefer to sit. Wonderful. Um, I always prefer to sit. So Same. I guess, yeah, so everybody knows that the coffee bean um, in its raw state is not edible. It doesn't taste anything like chocolate. Uh, so there are a number of processes we go through to get that bean to taste like chocolate. And it's like gloopy from the videos I've seen. I, eventually. Oh. Mm. I assume you misspoke and meant cocoa? Oh. I heard coffee. Oh, I did say coffee. My, Sorry. Because I haven't had any. Ah, that'll do it. Yeah. Uh, see, I'm I don't know 30. how things work, so I didn't realize that that was wrong. Because I'm over like, 30 okay. now, and I have reflux. Yeah, and coffee and chocolate um, go together. Yeah, uh, Ooh, chocolate, to me. chocolate, 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 cocoa, cocoa, cocoa. All right, chocolate. You were saying? Yes. Was I? I guess. Cocoa beans. Will Somebody be was. In our, in our, in anyway, our, my mouth wasn't moving, so it was probably you. So the cocoa bean, in its natural state, uh, initially doesn't taste anything like chocolate. We all knew that. We all know we have to make it. We, we have to do things to it to make it taste like chocolate. Mm -hmm. The cocoa bean actually, yeah, the cocoa bean, I thought I'd said coffee, I said cocoa. The cocoa bean actually goes through a number of uh, kind of morphs or instars. Okay. And uh, they, they actually go through, they've got a really interesting and complex life cycle. Uh, in the wild, the original cocoa bean egg would be deposited into a water source where right. it would find its way into uh, usually a variety of freshwater snail. Okay. Uh, yeah. Those are quite common. What? Yeah. Okay. And uh, once it is inside the digestive tract of the snail, that's when it achieves the optimal conditions for it to morph into its second instar. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Gravity Pike says, it's cacao before it's been roasted and cocoa afterwards, and that's terrible. <laughs> 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 and I just love a good reference to mm -hmm. uh, Lex Luthor stealing all the hostess fruitcakes. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. So once that instar has matured, it's eventually excreted by the snail into the water. Gross. Okay. This is this is the second instar. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's in a, it's in a free swimming stage. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now here's where the human in intervention is important, because naturally, without human intervention, uh, the normal host for that second instar would usually be some kind of water fowl, often a duck, goose, uh, mm -hmm. tern, maybe. Okay. Uh, depending on the environment and the, sp uh, the species, uh, you know, like white, dark, etc. Okay. Yeah. Um, however, we've discovered that by implanting it into mammalian tissues, um, economically, I think voles are the best. Really? We found, yeah. yeah. Um, they've got the right. Anyway. But you're going to have to horse. That's yeah. the <laughs> correct pH balance. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, and they're they're small. They're cheap to raise. They're cheap to feed. Yeah. It's, okay. You know, you yeah. Can, they yeah they don't take much take much space. Yeah. Um, so, normally, if it, if it had gone on its normal life cycle and entered waterfowl, it would morph into its third instar there, uh, which, is, which is disgusting. We've tried it. Um, it tastes like bus. Yeah. So, by, but when it's implanted into mammalian tissue instead, it's not able to burrow as far as it normally would. Oh, okay. so it's closer to the surface? Yeah, so normally they would, um, normally it would burrow right into the waterfowl's uh, own digestive tract, and mm -hmm. that is where it would morph into the, what are we at? Third? Third? Third, uh, third star? That, so that's where it would, yeah, that was, that's where it would morph into its reproductive form. Yeah. Um, but because the mammalian tissue is a lot thicker, it doesn't quite make it to its target, and it ends up in the mammary glands. Okay. Um, and then unfortunately dies because they don't have the, uh, they, they just don't have the energy to continue on that trajectory. Okay, it doesn't have the environment it's looking for. Exactly. Okay, yeah. And it is, so, it, it is actually, so what we actually know is kind of the edible raw product for chocolate making. Yeah. Is actually the fermented corpse of this third instar as retrieved from a vole's mammary tissues. Gotcha. Yeah. I have never been more vindicated to hate chocolate than this moment. <laughs> that does it. Okay, that explains why it goes so good with dairy, though, right? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Awesome. 
Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. I've learned something today. I like to help. That was a doozy. <laughs> And I am going to mark that challenge as completed uh, because someone wanted to, Julie to inform everyone how chocolate is produced and to make it as cursed as possible while remaining bus safe. Great work. I have a degree. Amazing. How many mammals have we tried? 640? But I guess, I mean, yeah, like, it, like most things, it's probably based on okay. economics rather than specifically flavor. Well, now that yes. I've learned how chocolate is made, I want chocolate. I'm literally do, just telling you have to go get myself a piece of chocolate. It sounded delicious. Great. Well, yeah. Okay. 